Hey, welcome back to this mini lecture. This one's on the rise of e-learning. What is e-learning? Um, two definitions. First, it's the use of internet technology for learning outside of the classroom. And two, it's the use of internet technologies to deliver a broad array of solutions that enhance knowledge and, perform and performance. So again, it's, it's using technology, specifically internet-enabled and the technology to learn. Uh, the business of e-learning, it's grown a lot. Uh, global e-learning market was worth $215 billion in 2021. Uh, to the North American market is estimated to reach the expected value of $76 billion in 2030. And then three, the estimated to reach expected value of $645 billion by 2030. So as you can see, it's growing a lot. And it's grown a lot. And it's expected to continue growing into 2030 and beyond. Although, as we, as we probably best know um, recently uh, during COVID, e-learning is still relatively new. And uh, these there will be a lot of changes in the future. Uh, there are a number of different benefits. One is the cost of instruction per student. For example, even blended learning and fully online education have different costs. First, um, for blended learning, it's uh, the costs are 15 to 19 percent lower when blended, and you can still achieve an equivalent learning outcome. And two, uh, for fully online education, it's 79 to 80 percent lower when online. And this, of course, depends on the course on the course for cost of developing, maintaining courses, because depending on what the course is, it can be more or less expensive. Um, based on all of this, with online courses, universities will be able to teach 15 to 18 percent more students at the same cost. So as a result, there's a financial incentive to help um, to transition more to online education to help more students learn. Ease of access is uh, what ease is of uh, using e-learning is uh, important. Quote: E-learning has transformed education, both schools and businesses, making it easier for students and employees to learn at their own pace in an environment that suits them. When it comes to the future of education, it's clear that e-learning will play a huge role in the delivery of learning materials. So this ease of use can be uh, useful. Access can also be improved. Quote, when it comes to the formal education system, 78% of people believe that online learning will give more access to quality education. In terms of the business sector, organizations believe that virtual learning will make up at least 40% of the future learning structure, while some believe it could account for as much as 90%. So again, I think post-COVID, it'll probably be higher because I think people, the organizations and their employees and future employees are more used to uh, online learning. So I'm sure it will transition more and more, especially given that it's cost effective. Uh, specifically in classroom, um, um, online learning and e-learning deals with grades. Um, e-learning can lead to strong grades, but they're unevenly distributed. And this is the big problem. From a, standard, a Stanford study, it found that high-performing students excel online However, uh, lower performing students perform meaningfully worse at online courses than in in-person courses. So again, it can, it can make and it can help with grades and, and, and there are there is some evidence for it, but it can ex exacerbate problems with students who are lower performing. Uh, this leads to some challenges um, that kind of go back to the last slide. Uh, there can be a lack of technology access formally in schools. Uh, the, uh, if you're rural or maybe if you're poor, you can't afford a good uh, connection. You can have unreliable broadband connection. Three, uh, there's limited access to a quiet workspace. So oftentimes when you need to do that online, you might not have that as opposed to a school. And four, there's a lack of assistive technology support. So if you need assistive technology, that's really difficult if you're working and learning and studying remotely. Uh, according to Anne-Marie Canning, Quote, we've got to be really careful the digital provision doesn't compound the inequalities we already see in the educational system. Um, as from these challenges, you can see how the four challenges here, especially the first three, can be exacerbated by, by students who are from a poor, uh, who are poor or come from a lower income. Here are some conclusions based on all of the above. Uh, bro there is a broad impact on learning education as a whole from e-learning. Two, it is a constantly growing industry and looks to continue, especially post-COVID for both uh, schools and businesses. Three, uh, it is making inroads into education, business, et cetera. Four, um, it can help broaden, uh, e-learning can help broaden access to education because it's easy to use. The costs are lower compared to blended learning or traditional face-to-face -face learning. And five, there's a potential to narrow or um, unfortunately widen the digital divide. As a result, in total, there are profound opportunities and challenges from e-learning. That was the rise of e-learning. 
Thanks for watching. Look for, looking forward to seeing you again soon. Take care.